Well, thanks everybody for joining us today. We are super excited to present the Tasty Works web class for navigation traders. You know, it, it, for those of you who have been trading for any time at all, you know that you know Tasty Works has kind of taken the trading industry by storm, not only with their innovative technology, but with their crazy low commission rates. And so before I introduce our special guest, I just want to go over a quick disclosure. Make sure you understand Tastyworks is a self-directed brokerage account. They don't give financial or tax advice. Uh, you as a customer are solely responsible for your investments and trading decisions. Options are not suitable for all investors. They do carry risk. Make sure you read the characteristics and risks of standardized, op standardized options. And Tastyworks and Navigation Financial are separate, unaffiliated companies. We're not responsible for each other's services and products. Now that we got that out of the way, let us introduce our special guest. So Ryan Grace is part of the Tasty Trades on-air talent team, hosts the Ryan and Beef Show on Tasty Trade Monday through Friday. Uh, he's, he works on a number of initiatives within Tasty Trade, but you may have heard his voice doing the tutorials and different things for Tastyworks, so he knows the platform inside and out so welcome ryan give us a little uh glimpse into your daily activities at tasty trade and fill in some of those gaps hey steve well thanks for having me and uh, thank you everyone for having me on the webinar here today um like steve said um i work with our development team here at tasty trade and tasty Works. so i kind of head up our product management and have a lot of input into what the different platforms look like it's a lot of fun for me you know i always uh, equate it to if you're able to, um, you know, if you like playing video games, you get to design the video game. I like the trade. We get to design a lot of the technology that we use. So it's a lot of fun. Um, for me, you know, I'm actively trading for the most part every day. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to, to do that as well as have some input into the process. I usually aggregate a lot of the feedback, coordinate a lot of things with our development team, make sure that, you know, when we're doing a, a two-week development iteration, the features and the, the bug fixes that, we need to take care of, make it out into the platform, and then work with uh, the various other parts of the company, such as the marketing team and, and Tom and all the other on-air talent to, to make sure that everything is going in the right direction or um, you know, we're getting to where we want to be uh, in terms of technology for the company. So that's a little bit of my role on the product management side. And then I also um, get to have a lot of fun on air. Tom gives me half an hour each day to do a show called the Ryan and Beef Show where we get to take a look at what's going on in the market. We show everybody how to use the platform. We talk a lot about different um, you know, option strategies, opportunities we might see, present some research every now and then. So we have a lot of fun creating content and also building technology for trading. So that's my role here at Tasty Trade and Tasty Words. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. So we had we had Tom on uh, co-host a webinar with us in December. And so he gave he gave us a little demo, a little bit of an overview of the Tastyworks platform. We spent some time, uh, you know, just talking about his career and his philosophy and stuff like that. So didn't spend as much time directly on the platform. Okay. And now with the new release of the Analyze tab, something that we as as navigation traders I know have been waiting for, and we're really excited to hear more about that. So. If you want to jump in, take us through a demo of the platform and, let, and then let's end with the Analyze tab and show us kind of the power of that and, and how that can help us in our trading. Okay, perfect. So we'll jump in here. We'll get started. And what we're looking at is the Tastyworks desktop platform. We have a couple different versions of software. We have a web-based platform, a couple mobile apps. But this is um, really where we spend you know, most of our efforts on uh, the Tastyworks desktop platform. It's our, it's our fastest platform. It has the most features. So this is um, what I'm spending most of my time on uh, each day. But to take a step back, I'll first give you an overview of kind of the philosophy that went into the design of the platform. You'll notice that it looks a lot like many of the other platforms that are out there. You have three different sections, really, that it's broken down into. So we have this left side panel where my cursor is uh, above this watch list right now. We have what I'll call our kind of main workspace, this center panel here. And then we have this right sidebar as well. And you can customize some of the information or you can jump to different tabs. So you'll notice that we have kind of a, a quote details section here. We can see some information about a position that we already have on in QQQ. And then we can see an activity section as well. But the idea behind the platform is that whatever symbol you're working in, that information translates across all different uh, sections or all three of these 
different sections here within the, the software. So right now, if we look at uh, the queues, I have a position on in the queues. So if I were to click on, on the queues in the watch list, it would populate this here at the top. We have some information about it. But over here on the right-hand side, it would also show me that I do have that position. We have a diagonal call spread here. And if I had been trading in QQQ today, I would see my activity. And I can also just quickly jump back, whether it's 30 days or 14 days, whenever I first put that trade on here. And that information um, for those filled orders and anything else I've done will pop up in there. So I don't have to jump to the specific activity tab, even though we have these different pages. Everything is displayed for you all at once. So you don't constantly have to go back and forth between your positions, the trade page, your activity. Did I get filled? Where am I with that order? Everything is right there in front of you. And you'll notice that as I click on these different symbols, it's going to change the information that's displayed. So I've clicked on Apple. It's highlighting Apple on the left-hand side. We have information about the symbol at the top. If I jump over to the trade page, I don't have to re-enter that symbol. Here's our option chain. So we already have the option chain and all the different expirations for Apple. If I go over to a chart, I have, uh, as it loads here, I'll have a chart of Apple, so I don't have to re-enter that symbol. So we make it really easy to see all of the relevant information and make it very quick to set up trades without having to go back and forth between different pages and enter in that symbol each time. And you'll see, here's what I was talking about with the activity. So I've got all of my previous activity in Apple. I don't currently have a position, but if I did and I was looking at this, or maybe I was just looking at you know, a different chart if I wanted to, I could quickly just jump in here and uh, make a, a trade in this symbol. So that's the philosophy of the design. And now I'm gonna go over each one of the different pages or tabs that we have in the platform. And I'll start with the positions view, which is going to be your portfolio, where you view whether or not you're up or down on a trade, and you can close your position from here. So I think it's pretty straightforward in terms of what we're looking at. We have the symbol that we have the position on in. So these are grouped right now. If you click on any one of the rows for that particular symbol, it's going to open up the symbol grouping, and we can see what those positions are. So in Tesla, for example, you can see we have a strangle, um, we have a short call, and we have a vertical put spread, the 250, 235 put spread here. And so I can see those individual legs as well as some information about each one of those. I can also see that information here at that uh, grouping level as well. So we can see the trade price that we bought or sold each one of these options at. We can see the current mark, where it is in the market, and that's going to be the mid price between the bid ask spread. And then we can see the P&L as a result. So wherever we sold it or we bought it at relative to where it's currently trading, we're going to be up and down on the trade in general. And then we can see where the P&L on the day is. So for uh, Tesla here today with a relatively bearish position, it was uh, a position that had a pretty good day. In addition to that, we have, um, and this is just how I've set up my page. You can customize this. But in addition to this, we've got the Greeks. We've got Delta, Gamma, Theta, and Vega for each one of these positions. And then again, as you open it up, you can see that for each one of those options or those legs that make up your strategy. If there's anything that you'd like to see that isn't displayed, there's a settings button up here. Looks like a gear. If you click on that, this is where you'll be able to customize the view for the positions tab. And this is also the same way that it works for watch lists or any of the other pages within the platform. But from here, you can choose which items you'd like to display and which items are not currently displayed. And if there's something that's not displayed that you'd like to display, it's very easy to do that. You just click on it, and it's going to send it over there to the display column. And if you click on it a second time, it'll remove it. So as you do that, really easy to customize this. You can drag and drop, and that's going to change the order in which these are displayed. But if you click on it, you can remove it and uh, click on it a uh, second time over here in the not displayed section, and that will add it back to your portfolio. So we'll click OK and close out of there. Um, you can see some information about the symbol as well. So if we look up here, we'll see that Tesla was down $12.13 today to a last price of $330.93. What I get asked about all the time that we're working on right now is, well, how come these positions aren't grouped? Can you group positions? And so it's not very intuitive when you look at it like this. I understand that. We have a pretty robust feature coming that will automatically group the positions based on how you enter the order. It'll give you the ability to custom group them, and you'll be able to see that information a lot better because I know everybody wants to say, well, what did I sell the iron condor at? Or what did I buy the call spread at? 
And then where is that trading in the market? I want to be able to look at that independently instead of having to write it down or go back and do the math in my head. So I know it's not that intuitive looking at it right now. We do have that feature coming soon, and that's going to be called our order chains. But this is what's displayed at the moment. And this is also where you're going to close or take an action with your portfolio. You don't have to go to the trade page. You don't have to then set up an opposite order. All you need to do if you want to close a position, let's say we want to take a profit in this short 350 call in May, just click on it. That'll focus on the row. You can see that it's highlighted in gray. And then once you do that, you just need to right click and that'll open up a menu where you have a couple different choices here. Clicking on close position will take you to the trade page. This is where you can adjust your price and then route that closing order. But if we jump back, you'll see that there's a couple other options as well. And we have the ability to close the position at a percentage of our max profit. So this is really more for just selling options. It's kind of the bread and butter, or at least what we talk about primarily on the Tasty Trade Network. What this lets someone do then is if you have a defined amount of money that you can make when you sell an option, this is going to set up a good till cancel order to close it at a percentage of that max profit. You don't have to do the math in your head. It'll set it up automatically. So just uh, to simplify it, let's just say if we sold something for a dollar, I decide to close it at 50% of its max potential profit of a dollar. It's going to set up a GTC order to buy it back at 50 cents and effectively realize a profit of 50% of the max potential there. So that's what that feature does. Uh, quick roll is going to set up a rolling order in the very next expiration. Most of the times that's going to be a weekly expiration or you can highlight roll and this will show you as you go further out in time, what the difference is in those prices are, should you roll to the next month or should you roll to you know, three months from the current date, whatever it might be, it'll show you right there. So you don't have to go in and compare and change the expirations and decide, you know, is this better? Is that better? Am I being compensated more for doing this? You can see everything right in there. And then we'll get to the analysis in a little bit, but clicking on the analysis will send this over to the um, analyze page here, analyze mode and allow you to do a deeper dive into that closing position or the entire uh, thing that you have on in your portfolio. So I'm going to close off of this and go back to the positions tab. Hey, Ryan. Yes. Before you, before you jump ahead, I want to go back to one thing you said, because I think it's really, really powerful and I don't want to gloss over it. And that is what, what you mentioned about what you guys are going to be putting out sometime in the future. And that's the, the order chain. Okay. So tell us, tell us a little bit more about that because I get questions all the time about, okay, I've, I had this iron condor or, or I had this strangle. I've rolled and adjusted several times and I'm trying to keep track of, you know, what, where I'm at from a profitability standpoint. Tell us a little bit more about that option chain because I think that's going to be such a powerful tool and such a huge differentiator. Yeah, I, um, I'd be happy to talk more about that. I do too in terms of, um, you know, looking at this as something that could potentially be a a game changer, or at least a nice feature, because I don't see it um, really anywhere else at the moment. And I know the frustration everybody has with, well, what's my basis on this position? Or really, am I up or down after a series of actions that I've taken? I've rolled this a few times. Where am I? So what order chains is going to do, and this existed to a degree. It wasn't as robust as it will be due to some of the limitations we had. But this existed in our previous web platform called Doe. And what it's going to do is intelligently connect all of your trading activity. And at times, you know, certainly the computer won't be perfect, so you'll be able to customize certain things. But ideally, let's say you roll a position. Instead of only viewing the P&L open for the current position, like you can in most platforms and in Tastyworks right now, this will show you where you are given all the actions that you've taken. This will show you your basis after a series of rolls. So then you'll be able to manage the position and not when you, you know, are up on the new position, but when you're up on the entire thing, you'll then know, okay, I made the roll and now I can finally get out of this. I averted disaster, turn a losing trade into a winner, whatever it might be. The other thing that I would think of, um, you know, off the top of my head that it would be beneficial for, let's say you buy a stock, you sell a call against it to reduce your basis, to get a little bit of income, increase the yield, whatever. As you do that, maybe the call expires, you sell another one the next month, and through this process, you effectively reduce the basis or the, the trade price cost of your stock from, we'll say, you know, maybe it was $50, and maybe now it's down to 47 Most platforms, ours currently as well, is only gonna, are only going to show you 
that you bought the stock at 50, no matter what you've sold against it to overall you know, reduce that cost. This will show you what that basis is, and then you can make decisions based on that. Excellent. Uh, one other question uh, that we're seeing in the chat, Ryan, is, is there anywhere on the screen that shows the P&L of your portfolio for the day? Yes. It shows it by symbol, but it, does it show it added up? It does. And I just, um, anywhere where you see these little arrows that are pointing down or would be pointing up left or right, that indicates that you can expand or collapse that section. So I just moved some things around to give us some more viewing space. But I'll click on this here. And this is going to show you all of that portfolio information. So we can talk about that for a second. And um, what I have going on right now is there are four accounts that are connected to this login that I have. And so right now we're displaying two of those four accounts. You can adjust all of these things within the settings. Uh, the other two accounts that I have here don't have any capital in them. So we're only looking at the two that do. And you'll see both of those accounts. So all accounts that are connected to your username or any accounts that you have an LTA on, you can see them all right here at once and look at those different rows and see how that account is performing, how this other account is performing, and so on. Or you can just drill down into each one of them. So if I click on the first one, you'll see that any of those orange circles and those positions in this account just below, they all went away. Now I'm only viewing the purple account 05014. And you'll also notice that there's this little icon that's highlighted. That's indicating to me that that's the current trading account. So if I go and set up a trade, that's the account that the position is going to be um, added to. If I double click on this orange account, you can see I've now changed the active trading account. This is the one that the positions are going to be added to. And you can also make the change to the account for the trade on the trade page. But if you click on both of these, it's going to display everything. If you click off of them, it will display everything. You'll see that these symbols have the same circle. So they're coordinated here, color coordinated, and I know which account the position is in. You'll also notice that SBXY and Tesla have multiple circles next to them. That indicates that I have a position in those symbols in both of my accounts or many of my accounts. And when I click on the row, you can see I have one position in the 05011 account and the rest of the positions are in the 05014 account. So it's very easy to get a sense of what's going on across all of your, um, all of your accounts that are connected together. And you can see you know, some details as well, your beta weighted deltas. So we're gonna beta weight against the SPY, essentially your directional risk relative to the market. We have the theta decay because we focus on options. So we have the theta value here for the accounts, um, simply just how much we could make here if one day passes in time. Nothing else changes, even though nothing else changing is very unlikely. We have the net liquidating value of the account, which is just, again, like in any other platform, signaling what would the, asset, what would the value be should we close out of all the existing positions. And then here are those two key metrics that everybody focuses on. What's my P&L on the day? And then as a result, you know, where am I year to date with these accounts since January 1st? And to the right of that as well, we have the available option buying power and stock buying power. So you can see relative to the, the net lick of the account using um, quite a bit of the available capital. So that's where you would see that. And I had it collapsed initially. If you click on this, it'll expand it. And you'll see that that's true for any of these different arrows in here. If I click on them, we're going to open up those various sections. So that's the uh, the portfolio kind of overview here. And the delta component, Ryan, that you mentioned, you mentioned that uh, beta weighted to spy. So, you know, on the on the old platform that we that we won't mention names of the the uh, you know you you would you would choose what you want to beta weight it to, but within this platform, it's automatically beta weighted to SPY, right? So you don't yeah, have to mess right with now, it. Right now, by default, it's beta weighted to the spy. Um, it's been a popular request to beta weight to other symbols. We have that built on the back end. We just have to add um, a front end or user interface to do that within the settings. So that's something that it should be very easy for us to add. We just, maybe it's fallen through the cracks or we haven't added it yet. But um, by default, it is gonna just beta weight to the spy. Very good. Um, does anyone have any more questions on the positions tab here? Uh, one, one of the questions was just on timing of that order chain feature. Any idea when that'll come out? We've got our team, our head developer, um, at least on the head platform developer, is working on it now. So 
I would say hopefully within the next three months, um, just really depending on how many issues he runs into or what kind of struggles he has. We have um, a limited team in terms of what everybody's specialty is. So we have about two people that are more of the kind of um, Java developers for the front end here with the platform. And um, my guess is it'll take them maybe anywhere from two to three months to finish from where they are here. Okay. But maybe sooner than later. I would certainly like to see it sooner. So that is the, um, oh, I guess one last thing I want to just quickly mention. There are filters here at the top. They're all turned on. They don't look that pretty. We have some, uh, some fixes coming to these as well. But if they're highlighted in black, it means that they're showing that particular type of position. So if we had some stocks, which I think um, we have an ETF here, SVXY, if I click off of that, it'll remove the long shares, and it'll leave us only with, um, and we'll take off our closed positions on the day, It'll leave us only with a short call that we have against um, 100 of those shares. So these will allow you to remove anything. You know, now we're only looking at futures, remove our working orders, or if I want to do everything and not group it by symbol, just clicking on these will filter the display or change the display. But um, that's the positions tab, which is going to be your portfolio tab, like in most platforms. Now I want to jump over to the trade page and talk about the various ways that we can set up and analyze our trades. So as I mentioned before, anything that you click on will add that symbol at the top and give you some relevant data as well. You can also type in anything you want. So let's say that we wanted to go from Apple to Tesla. Just type in TSLA, and there's a little bit of a delay with my, uh, my screen here, so just a second as it starts to respond. We'll get that typed in there. I don't know if our Internet's a little slow or what's going on. Oops. So Tesla, hit enter. So just like with most platforms, you can search um, for a symbol or you can just click on a symbol. We can click on Apple again. And once you do that, it's going to load the option chain. There's a couple different views that we have or different modes we like to call them for trading. So we have your traditional option chain, which is going to be our table mode. We have this visual way to set up trades that we call the curve. And I'll talk about that in a little bit here. We also have an active trader, and this is going to be what's somewhat equivalent to a ladder or a dome in some other platforms. This is more uh, conducive, I would say, to futures trading or actively trading equities, not so much um, options. And then we have this analysis mode, which is an overlay on top of the curve um, tab or curve page here. But let's start with the table. And just go through how easy it is to quickly set up some trades if this wasn't something that Tom covered in detail. Because this is one of the things that where it's not necessarily a feature as it exists in all the other platforms. But I think we've made it really, really easy to quickly set up trades and view some of that relevant information when you're trying to decide on a particular strategy. So you have your basic information here. We have our option expiration. So the, uh, the expiry date is right here on the left-hand side. In the middle here, you can see the number of days until that date. So with today being the first, we've got 15 days to go until the 16th. And then we can see a VIX style implied volatility calculation for that expiration as well over here on the right. If I click on any of these, if we were to click on the row for March 16th, it's going to open up the option chain. Right now, we're only viewing eight strikes um, for the puts and the calls. But if I go and select all, you'll see that that opens it up quite a bit, and it looks um, very similar to how it's displayed in a lot of other platforms. Now, here's how easy it is to set up trades and make adjustments to your, your strategies. What you'll find is there's, the, uh, there's a, new, a number of different ways to do the same thing within the platform. This is how I like to set up trades. Any bid price that you click on is going to let you sell the option, and then any ask that you click on, if you click on the offer, it'll let you buy the option. So very quickly, with two clicks, we have a short vertical put spread, so selling a put spread here. If I click on it again and drag and drop, I can change the strikes very quickly. So if I want to widen this out from five points to seven and a half, can move this to the 162 half strike, can move this further out of the money. And it's very easy to just quickly drag and drop. You can also drag across the strike bar. We could change this from a short put spread to a short call spread just by grabbing these different option icons and sliding them over to the other side where the calls are. So that's how easy it is to set up trades to make quick adjustments. You'll also see some buttons at the bottom here. So this will allow you to adjust your strikes as well. If I click on those, it will be either up or down the strike bar. 
We can widen out the width of the spread or tighten the spread. We can increase the quantity of contracts we're buying or selling. So these probably should be plus or minus, but as we click left or right, you can see that clicking to the right, starting to increase the number of contracts and clicking to the left on decreasing the contracts. And you'll notice that that number is changing down here within our order ticket. So if I click on that again, we'll get back to a one lot. Then we can also quickly jump to another expiration. Let's say we wanna go out here in time and we wanna jump into to April. So now we're into the, uh, the April 20th expiration, 50 days to go. So it's very easy to, to quickly jump back and forth through this process just by clicking the buttons. Clicking on swap will just change the action you're taking with these options. So we're selling the 180 right now, we're buying the 185. If I click on swap, we're now buying the 180 and selling the 185. So we have a, a long call spread instead of a, a short call spread there. And then just like a web browser, undo or redo, we'll go back to the, uh, the different actions that you were taking. So you can view, um, you know, whether you were moving a strike around or whatever it might be, you can just quickly jump back and forth in terms of the frames that you were looking at and um, clear will clear that off. But what I like about this too is as you're setting up trades, let's just say we're gonna sell this five point wide put spread, we can see some relevant information without having to go ahead and click that review and send button. And down here at the bottom, we have a probability of profit, which is gonna be the probability of your break even expiring out of the money for options that you're selling or spreads that you're selling. It's gonna be the probability of your break even being in money at expiration for anything that you're buying. We have the extrinsic value here, so $114 in extrinsic value out of the money spread, same as the price. We have a uh, P50 value, and this is kind of interesting. This is something that we do specifically here at Tastyworks, and this is a Monte Carlo simulation that just looks at, given a static implied volatility, and granted implied volatility will change, but given the static implied volatility right now, about 27%, we run a Monte Carlo simulation and it effectively shows you through that random number generator how many um, of those different trades or those different prices reached a point equivalent to a value where you would close this position at 50% of the credit that you received. So it's effectively um, a little way to see kind of a loose probability around the likelihood of getting to half of your potential profit, which is going to be greater than you know, that probability of profit. So a couple different numbers that we look at more so for a gauge, certainly they're not static, markets are fluid, this is gonna move around, they're gonna change, but it helps us in determining, you know, where we might wanna set up our strikes if we're selling options or for buying options. Additionally, we have the delta value of the spread. So we can see that this is a bullish trade, we want the price to go up right now, it's uh, equivalent to being long about 12 shares of stock, so it has 12 deltas. We have the theta value on a per day basis. So if we sell this for $114 down here, right now, and granted it's not linear, but um, we've got $1.23 or almost $1.24 in theta decay between um, today at these prices and the end of the day tomorrow. And also then the max profit and the max loss of our trade. So difference between the width of the spread and the credit received, we've got a loss of 386, that's our risk max potential profit of $114. So all that information is displayed. As we make adjustments to this, you'll see that that information changes and that data changes. So we widen the spread out. We're doing this for a better credit, $235, which you can see we have more risk. And so this allows you to, in combination with trying to find something that maybe has probabilities that fit your level of risk aversion or your setup and that risk reward ratio, this allows you to kind of quickly see the details of the trade while you're setting the trade up and it's going to be dynamic and adjust as you make changes here. One last thing I want to point out um, is at the top of the option chain, right now we're looking at the volume for each strike and we're looking at the delta for each strike. But if you click on these two labels, you'll be able to open a menu and this is going to show you some different data points that you can select to, uh, to view. So maybe we want to see the probability of these options expiring out of the money. Click on that, we can see the 170 is at 66%, and the 162 half is at 83%. Change volume to open interest or anything else, we get some details about those particular strikes. Additionally, we have a strategy menu at the top of the platform here, so this would be similar to if you were to right click on any strike in Thinkorswim, for example, you would open up a strategy menu here. You click on this, it opens the menu, you'll see that you can toggle from short to long, from selling to buying, or vice versa, and you can toggle any of the puts to calls and vice versa. And then once you've done that, 
you can click go and that'll set up the strategy. So we just changed that to a, a vertical call spread that we, we would be buying. So that's the table view. Before I move on to any of the other uh, modes here, is there anything you'd like me to answer? Yeah, a couple of questions here, Ryan. One from John, he was asking about the back end of, of Tastyworks. Uh, mainly, what's the chance that, that your servers get overwhelmed, trades don't occur, stability, that kind of thing? So that's a great question. That's something that we've been very cognizant of um, throughout the last year as we've been getting started. Um, we, you know, personally, I'll notice that, let's say you go back a couple of weeks, we had an environment where markets are selling off, ton of volume, ton of activity, and you can't log into your particular broker. So you need to take an action and you're not even able to get in to do that. We haven't had any issues at all as we focused for about the last six months on just purely on stability. So while we haven't been able to launch as many of the cool features or the different things that people have requested, most of our core development team's focus has been on the back end, has been on the overall infrastructure, um, setting up uh, you know, a second data center essentially in New York or in New Jersey, and also you know, working on our not only hardware but the software behind the scenes here in Chicago. So we are extremely fast. We like to think we're one of the fastest. We have the ability to really tune it up if we wanted to. Um, as we get more people, we are 100% able to scale, and that's something that, like I said, we've been conscious of. So I would say, um, you know, relative to anybody else, I don't have technical specifics off the top of my head, but we have not had any issues in terms of stability, in terms of people not being able to log in um, when you see a market that starts to sell off or you see a market that, you know, all of a sudden everybody's participating. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll echo that too. I've had the same experience where, you know, with, with, with other brokers, you know, where there's technology glitches or, you know, freezing up of the platforms. I mean, the, the Tastyworks platform, from my experience so far, has just been nothing but smooth sailing. I mean, it, it's fast. It's reliable. I, I just I haven't had any issues at all. So kudos well, to you guys on that. Yeah, I appreciate you mentioning that. You know, that, too, might be a function of the, you know, the fact that we don't have a ton of features. Some people will say, well, you don't have this, you don't have that. And at times that can, depending on the system that you're running the platform on, you know, some of that stuff can really bog it down. So with the lack of, um, you know, lack of things like fundamental analysis around particular companies or whatever, um, we're able to just really run a lightweight, uh, very fast platform that allows you to, to trade options um, and set stuff up very quickly. And, and, you know, hopefully we see that stability continue going into the future. But it's certainly at the front of our minds, stability and security are, um, you know, one of the things that we focused on for really, like I said, about the last six months or so. And Ryan, another, another kind of tying into that, and I don't need, I don't think that we have time to do a full demo on the other, but as far as the web version, and if somebody's trading from work, uh, you know, trying to get around the firewall and not being able to download software, that kind of thing, uh, speak to that a little bit, and maybe a little bit about the difference between the desktop version versus the web version. Yeah, well, I'll be upfront with everyone. We haven't given the web version nearly as much love as it deserves or as it needs at this point. So um, it's certainly not my first choice in, in a trading platform, though I understand uh, most people have a job and most uh, people work in an environment where the, you know there's a corporate firewall. You can't stream the data. You can't even download the platform in terms of the desktop. So they uh, have to resort to the web. Um, it's not going to be as fast for sure. It'll allow you to do everything that we show in here. It does present all of the same information. You'll be able to um, you know, really see, uh, for the most part, everything as it pertains to the option chains, as it pertains to your positions. The one thing where they're entirely different and um, really lacking in the web is that we just don't have a robust charting package at all. And I wouldn't say that we have the most robust charting in the desktop platform at this point. But the charts are, are very, very basic. Uh, there's no indicators or anything like that when you look at the web-based platform. So that's, that's an area where it's really lacking, though it is the only resort if you have to get around a corporate firewall and you can't use the desktop platform. The web platform will get the job done, but it is going to be constrained by the fact that it's a, a web-based platform and doesn't really get to harness all of the, the processing power of you know, a desktop, uh, like a desktop platform would. And one last tech question here. John's asking about, do you guys use your own hardware or are you using AWS, Google, Azure, some other third so, party? 
Um, we use our own hardware, and then we also run microservices using AWS. So depending on what it is uh, specifically, it would you know it could be a microservice that could use AWS, or it would be you know one of our numerous servers. But we have a data center here in Chicago. We have a data center in New York. So any of the actual um, you know the trading activity would not occur on the cloud. That would occur uh, via the servers. But there are some microservices and different things that we run different processes that we um, need to have in place so that, you know, at the end of the day, you have reconciliation that occurs, et cetera. Some of that stuff we do um, through AWS, but the majority of it is going to be on our own hardware. Cool. All right, cool. Let's let's keep moving. Um, Craig, I, I see your question there. And when, when Ryan gets the active uh, tab, we'll, uh, we'll address that. So keep going, Ryan. Okay, cool. So I'm going to jump over to the curve very quickly. Anything that you set up on the table, you're going to see on the curve as well. And now the curve is just a different way to view what you're doing. Um, all the information is exactly the same. This is something that we rolled out a few years ago with our web-based software. And the idea behind this was that this would be more of an educational tool. For anybody that's brand new to option trading, you can very quickly visualize how these strategies work. In terms of what you want the stock price to do relative to what you're setting up here, you can quickly see green is good, green is money. We want the stock price to move higher in this case and get into that green zone. And this is telling us that this is a bullish trade, which we know it is as we're buying a call spread. If it goes lower, we know that it's not what we want to have happen because we want the stock price to go up. So this is something where you can really visualize your trades and you can also see some information a little bit better around what market expectations are. So we have this distribution curve, you'll see with the 28 days, this is showing us, given the current level of implied volatility, what are those one and st um, two standard deviation moves? What are the probabilities that the price, if we use the current price as the mean, and with an implied volatility of, we'll call it 27% right now, for that 28 day period, this is showing us then where the market expects the stock price to go. So we can see that right now, there's a 68% chance or so, or the market's pricing in, I should say, a 68% likelihood that in the next 28 days, Apple will stay just above 160 and you know somewhere just below 190, we'll call it 187 or so. Certainly that can change, but if you know we have control over risk management to a degree at order entry, we have a control over the probabilities um, that we can put in our favor or not in our favor when we're setting up trades with options here, whether we're selling or buying, this helps us to kind of gauge Given how the market is pricing options, you know, what are the chances that our call or our put or whatever it is that we're doing here, what are the chances that they're going to expire out of the money, in the money, what do we think the stock price is going to do over this period of time and that period of time for this case being 28 days. So it allows you to kind of visualize the implied volatility instead of having to say, well, implied vol is 10%, the stock price is 100, so I know that 68% of the time given a 10% implied vol the market is pricing it to trade within a range of 110 or 190. Instead of having to think about that or do it, we just show you right here, coupled with the strategy that you're setting up so you can see exactly how that strategy works. You know, if we were to open up the strategy menu, changes to an iron condor instead, or if we were to go over to the table and click around, we would see that, you know, this is now a neutral strategy. So if I add that there, jump back to the curve, and um, we move these around here, it'll adjust and it'll show us what we want the stock price to do. And here we want the stock price to stay above the short put and below the short call. So this is the curve. It's not any different in terms of the information that's available or displayed just in its presentation. Um, I'll jump over to the active tab now and I'm going to switch to a different symbol. So I'm going to set up uh, instead of the positions watch list, I'll drop down our tasty trade futures because we're primarily going to trade futures here on the active tab. And this is similar to a ladder. This is our, our first iteration of kind of an active trading platform within, um, within the Tastyworks software. Uh, it pertains for the most part to futures trading. We launched futures a few months back, but it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, you can't trade off of a chart just yet. You can see a chart for the symbol that you're working with, but it's not as robust, I'd say, as some of the charting and other platforms. So I know that anyone that's a chart trader, and a lot of people uh, certainly are, this is not the best way to do it, but we are working on some improvements. But to give you an example of how this would work, 
you select the symbol. So here we've clicked on uh, WTI, we've clicked on crude futures here. We've got CL slash or slash CLJ8. We can see the bid, we can see the offer, and up here in parentheses, if I want to sell this, I'm going to click on the bid. And then from here, I can adjust that price. So as I drag this up or down, it's going to allow me to sell it at you know 61.36 or 61.44, whatever it might be. As I start to move this up here, um, it'll allow me to change that price. I don't know why on this screen I'm on. For some reason, I'm not able to. I'm not clicking in the right area to focus this here. But normally, I would be able to just drag this up or down. And same thing with anything that you're going to buy. So if we were to you know, look and say maybe we want to buy very quickly, we want to set up something where we're going to buy an S&P future, we can then drag that. And there, this time it's I clicked on the right thing. Um, we can drag this so that I can set this up at any price. Or if you have an idea of the price, you can simply just type it in up here or click on these buttons. So there's a few different ways to do the same thing. But what this does is just basically show you, you know, where the current price is in a similar fashion to some ladders or some um, different trading domes that exist in other platforms, shows you where your order is relative to that price. And then once you get filled, it'll show you your basis and that information that's relevant to the position over here. So you don't have to jump over to the positions tab. You can see this is gonna cost me a little bit over $6,000 of buying power. Uh, 15 days left until we're going to roll this position to the next expiration. And then as we have this on, we'll see the PL open, PL day. As we add contracts or take contracts away, we'll see that overall delta position. And we'll see the, the notional um, tick value as well as the minimum tick size here, too. So you get a sense very quickly um, if you're brand new to futures trading, you know, maybe you don't know what the tick size is or what that notional dollar value is per tick for, say, corn futures. Well, when you click on corn futures, click on slash ZC, it'll show you that information in here and then also some information about the symbol itself. You can see that we were down about uh, almost 35 points at the moment. So that's the extent of the active trader. There really is nothing else that it does at this time other than allow you to set up buys and sells with futures and then make adjustments from there. And you, you can't do individual stocks or directional options on it either at this point, right? You could. Um, you, I don't believe that you can do individual options because I'd have to be able to, from here, pull in the OPRA code, and I don't think that we can do that. But um, you should be able to click on Apple, for example, and buy or sell. So if I click on you know, the bid here, I can decide to move Apple stock around and sell it at, at whatever price I want. Um, so you could do that. We don't have level two quotes. So that's a popular question I get. Um, the reason for that is we don't, in terms of our existing customer base, we don't have a lot of equity traders. So it's just not something that we've paid um, to get the data for, but could be at some point in the future at the moment we don't have it. Um, but you could, so to just take a step back, you can sell, buy and sell both um, futures and um, individual stocks here. And Ryan, one of the questions from Craig was, is there a way to set up a trailing stop or a stop loss on a uh, buying a call or a put or a credit spread. And I'll give I'll give my two cents and then I'll let you answer as well. Craig, my, my two cents is this. If you're buying an option uh, like a put or a call, that's a defined risk trade. And 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 so your your max loss is defined anyway. So I don't know why you would use a stop in that case. And and the same thing for a credit spread. The, our philosophy at navigation trading is if you if you're putting on defined risk trade that is kind of the, the the amount of risk that you're willing to take on that trade. But Ryan, I'll let you jump in there and, and, and see if there's any other answer that you have in yeah. regards to the platform. Well, you could certainly use those order types. Um, we will not do that for spreads just because um, Tom and Scott's past experience with Thinkorswim, it can sometimes uh, not be to the customer's benefit to use a stop on a spread. Um, they can get filled at prices that are uh, not again, not to their benefit. So we don't do stops on spreads, but if you were to do an individual equity, a future, or just a single option, you can change that order type here and you can use the stop market or a stop limit. And then you can move that, um, that stop price up or down as you see fit. One thing I do want to mention though, is that we have some improvements coming. So if you start to trade futures through here, uh, personally, I get a little frustrated with the process that you have to adhere to because you have to set some of these stops up. Um, you'd have to set your stop up separately from the order that you might enter to take a profit. Um, 
So that's kind of a pain. We also do not have conditional orders. That's something that we are actively in the process of adding, but that makes it really difficult to have a stop in place as well as an order to, to close out of your position because if one or the other gets hit, it doesn't pull that second order off of um, or out of the book. And so that's where, uh, you know, at this point, it's kind of a problem. So we need to get that in there as soon as possible. We are working on that. But the conditional orders, the brackets, those don't, um, they're not available at this, at this time. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's the table, the curve, and the active. And now let's um, cover the analysis or the analyze mode here. So you could do three things with the analyze mode. You can do some analysis around an existing position. You can do some analysis around a new uh, potential position that you're going to open up. And you can also look at the impact that a new position would have on your existing position. So let's just take a look here and, you know, what I'm going to talk about is going to apply to any of those three scenarios, but it's easiest to just look at something that we're, excuse me, that we're thinking about setting up. So let's just say that we think, um, and this is kind of a hypothetical, this might be the way that I would approach it, or I see a lot of our customers approach it. And, you know, certainly people are going to do different things and we can, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has, but let's just say you want to get a sense of uh, I'm coming in. I'm going to sell a strangle on Apple. I think the implied volatility is relatively high. I think the option prices are expensive. I think that you know Apple's going to be range bound and it's going to come down. Those option prices are going to come down a little bit in a couple of weeks. And I want to see what the theoretical P&L might be. Should I be correct in that assumption? So let's say that I open up the April expiration here and I'm going to sell the. Um, we'll say I'm going to sell the 185 call. And I'm also going to sell the 160. Put. Now I don't have a position on in here, so as I add those strikes, as I add those options here, they start to pop up. If I had something on already, it would appear over here in our analysis section. This is the tab where you're going to have your controls. You can change the date that you're viewing the theoretical values for. You can change the price of the underlying. You can also adjust the volatility for that expiration period as well. So this is where you'll change that implied vol. But to view the analysis, you can't yet view it on the table. We have something that we're going to overlay on top of this. The way I like to think about it, though, is that it is just an overlay. We are on the trade page. So anything that you do, if you click review and send, that is going to route a live order. So keep that in mind. But where you can view the analysis controls are on the curve. So if I click on analysis, that will open up some, uh, some buttons at the top. And then I need to click on either curve or on the right-hand side of the platform, click on View Analysis. Either one will do the same thing. When I do that, you can see that we now we've opened up, and see if I can widen this out just a little bit here. Now we've opened up our analysis view. We can zoom in a little bit to see it a little bit better. Uh, we can zoom out if that's the case, and we can also change the scale. From here, what we're looking at at the moment is simply just the P&L at expiration. So this might be some place to start if you want to get a sense of at expiration, what's my profit or loss going to be? It stays in the green zone. It's going to be $410. What's it going to be if you know we start to see this move higher? I'm getting shorter and shorter. It's moving against me. Okay, at about $200, I'm going to lose a little bit over $1,000 at expiration. So that's your at expiration. We can also turn on our theoretical value um, as well. And so let me talk a little bit about the theoretical value. What this is doing, and the only model that we're using at this time, I know in other platforms you can switch between the, the pricing model that you use. We'll add some additional ones. Right now we use the Black-Scholes model, because we think it's pretty straightforward. And what this is doing is taking those inputs into the model, and those inputs you can change over here, such as your days to expiration, we know the strikes of the options already, but we can change the days to expiration, we can change the price of the underlying stock, we can change our volatility input, we're going to use the risk-free rate, you can't adjust that yet. But it's going to take all of those inputs and it's going to spit out a theoretical value for each one of these options. It's not the value that is currently in the markets, but this is just given those inputs, theoretically, you know, what's the price that we get from that model? And then using that price, we swap out the actual price in the market where your mark is and we use the theoretical value instead 
to then compare to your trade price so you have a sense of using those theoreticals, what's the theoretical P&L given what I bought or sold you know, these options for for my position. So that's why you'll notice um, right now, you know, just given where the spreads are and what those theoreticals are, this is spitting out a theoretical P&L for March 1st of you know, $42.52 in the red. But let's say that we want to make some adjustments to this, and our initial assumption was about volatility is going to come down, price is going to stay relatively you know, where, to where it is right now, relative to where it is, but we're going to see time pass by a couple of weeks. If we go over here and we change this so that that's the case, we can open up a calendar or we can simply just click on the left or right arrows to change the date. But as we do that and we say, we're going to go out here a couple of weeks, you know, let's just even go towards the end of March. And we're going to drop the volatility down by a couple points here. We'll click down. We'll drop it down by 3% or so from the 26 or 27% it was at to 23 spot 5%. Now we can look at this and see, okay, even if the stock price starts to move around a little bit, theoretically, if those conditions exist by the end of March, another month or so here, we should see a good chunk of that potential profit. So one of the things that I, I think it allows people to do is start to get a sense of if this is the style of trading that they're doing, when might they want to think about or what would a target be in terms of looking at this and managing that trade at a profit. It also be able to see, you know, where you would be in terms of this starts to get out of control. You know, what are my losses and then how do I have to manage this? So that's a very straightforward way. This is the first iteration of the analyze mode. But it allows you to see, you know, given different inputs, given different market conditions and the Black-Scholes model here, what are my theoretical P&Ls when I do that? A couple other things that you can throw on here that I think are interesting, um, both the analysis curve. So this is the distribution curve that's going to be a function of our implied volatility input on this effective date, so on 328. So even if we wanted to go back to March 1st and just either jack up or turn down the volatility, we can get a sense of what that new one standard deviation move looks like, what those new probabilities look like as we see volatility either move up or move down. We can also compare that then against the current default um, for our overall expiration. And so we can make some adjustments to that to get a sense of just what this might look like as the market changes. Anything that you click on at the top, you can just click on a second time to remove it. So let's say that we remove that, we've looked at it, we think it's interesting, but we also maybe want to do some analysis around if this gets out of control, this particular strangle with these naked options, you know, when might I need to do something um, given a, a delta value that's either too high uh, relative to what I want it to be or too low. And so if I open up the Greek menu here, right now we're not showing any of the Greek values, but we can see how our deltas would change theoretically based on the pricing model. What would the deltas be should these conditions exist on 328, but the stock price is down here at, say, 160? Well, we're going to be long about 47 deltas compared to short, say, 10 deltas right now, 11 deltas that we can see down here. So this can also give you a sense of when maybe you might need to step in and if you want to, start to flatten out or balance out those deltas, again, based on the Black-Scholes model and, you know, theoretically where we might be at. And Ryan, are those deltas specific to that symbol that you're looking at, or are those uh, beta-weighted to SPY as well? They are specific to Apple in this case. What we don't have available yet and we're working on is the ability to view, you know, changes in the market relative to your entire portfolio. So taking that beta-weighted portfolio, and simulating, you know, higher implied volatility, the passage of time, et cetera, seeing what those beta weighted deltas might be, and as a result, also seeing, you know, what that portfolio P and L might be. Got it. Great. Got it. Yeah. So looking at this, um, you know, this is the first iteration of our analyze mode. There's not really much else that it does, um, aside from, you know, you can turn some of these things on or off. You can see that there's a lot going on here. By default, we don't show you all of that at once. But you can view those, um, you know, the changes in the Greeks. You can view your P&L zones, um, either the theoretical zones or the at expiration. You can turn quotes on or off so you can see the bid and the ask at those various strikes. 
You can also you know, set up new trades. And anything that you do on the table or the curve, you can then analyze just by clicking on analysis. And if you wanted to analyze just one option or you had a position and you wanted to look at different expirations, whatever it might be, you can click on these boxes over here on the right. So now we're only looking at the short put. We've removed that short call. So if you have a bunch of different things going on here and you're thinking about putting on new positions, but you can't decide you know, what strike looks best, what makes the most sense for me, you can either include or exclude those from your analysis. Excellent. That's great stuff, Ryan. Uh, any other questions from the navigation trading community? And Ryan, I, I don't want to cut you off if you were going somewhere else next. No, that's um, no, that's really kind of the overview of, I think, the pages in the platform that people spend the most time on. Um, I do get questions about, you know, do you guys have charts? Do you have indicators? So if that's not anything that Tom covered, um, over here on the left-hand side, if you hold your cursor over it, you'll see that we have a couple different pages. We've got watch lists, have the ability to create watch lists and filter those watch lists. You can sort them. There's no way to screen a universe of stocks for specific conditions currently, but that's something we're working on. So we have a watch list. Um, Taste and Trade is just looks like our website. You can watch some Taste and Trade content. The charts, though, can be accessed by clicking on chart. Um, these aren't as robust as they eventually will be. It's a pretty basic implementation of a, part of a charting package from our quote provider, which is Dev Experts. You can add some indicators. Um, just click on indicators. There's a handful of different technical indicators that might be popular with traders. We have the ability to customize the colors, the view, the um, time frame, as well as the number of bars or the type of bars that you're using. So you know, right now we're looking at a one year daily. If we wanted to look at a um, a one day, one minute, we could, that's the fastest chart we could view. You can change it from candlestick to bar to line or area graph. And then there's just a handful of settings and different tools such as trend lines, or you can draw fibs or um, support resistance zones, that kind of thing. So very basic charts right now. We don't have a scripting language or anything, but we do have that built on the back end. We just haven't implemented it through um, any type of easy to use interface. And then, you know, like in most other platforms, we've got our history so we can see what we've done um, in terms of P&L year to date. You can look at our transactional history. We've got our activity tab. But for today's webinar, I think, um, you know, the areas of focus and where we spend most of our time, positions and trade and that new analysis tab. So going back to your comment on the uh, custom indicators releasing that script, you mentioned that's coming. You know, one of the things that that we use a lot in, in our training is a is an indicator that we put below our charts that shows both the IV rank as well as the IV percentile. Okay. Now, I know up by the, in the upper left, they're kind of near the symbol. Uh, you already have the IV rank displayed. Um, is there any, in the future, are you, are you looking to also display IV percentile or, or what, what are your thoughts there? Yes, 100%. So we have some work that we need to do um, that we just haven't gotten to yet. In terms of allowing everybody to change the time frame for the ranks, to change the time frame for percentiles and, and obviously add percentiles and also view that indicator on the charts that, that you guys are looking at as well. Uh, many people like that. It's very helpful. But instead of saying, you know, you've got to copy that script, add that script and go through that manual process, what we'd like to do is just let you click a button and it's right there. You can tweak um, the parameters. but just click the button and then go to the setup. So it's not as uh, you know as difficult to get some of those things in there. We want to take a lot of those indicators that we know are popular and just allow people to click on uh, the button to add them. And then Ryan, so I, we got a question from, from John about downloading and, and trying with a simulated account. I know you guys are coming out with kind of a paper trading account here, here before long. Uh, right now, if they if they download the software, which I, I put up a button there, so if you want to go open an account, download the software, you can. What is the functionality restriction before you fund the account, if any? Uh, talk about that a little bit. Okay, sure. So if you set up a username and password, start the account opening process, as long as you're registered in our system with that username, email address, and the password that you've created, you'll be able to download the platform. Um, you don't have to fund the account. You'll be able to get familiar with all the different tabs. You'll be able to use all these features in terms of you know, doing some analysis around potential trades, looking at certain things on the trade page. I believe it's either a 10 or 20 day period. I think it's, I want to say it's around 20 day period where if you don't fund the account with a minimum of $2,000, we turn the live quotes off. And the only reason for that is just that we get charged 
um, and it, it becomes expensive across all the different accounts on a monthly basis. So we get charged if we provide live quotes. So we don't charge customers whatsoever for anything um, when they're trading. If you fund the account with two thousand dollars, you keep those live quotes going. But if it's an unfunded account, we turn the live quotes off. You'd still have access to the platform, though, so you can get familiar with it. You can use the features. The one thing that you won't be able to do, the only limitation aside from the delayed quotes, is that you can't actually place um, demo trades or paper money trades and then view the, the life of those trades in the positions um, page. So we don't have uh, demo trading. That is coming hopefully by the end of the year. And for obvious reasons, we're about a year out and we had to make sure that we had everything kind of tightened down. Uh, locked down with um, you know real money trading, and then we'll be able to kind of offer that that simulator. So it's not that it's extremely difficult for us to do, but we do have to partition the servers in a specific way so that you know no no demo trades, um, or there's no way that you can add twenty million dollars to your account and fire off some demo trades that somehow make it into the market and we're responsible for. So there's have to, there's a little bit of work that we have to do, but um, it is coming soon. But in terms of limitations, that's the only one you can't actually you know monitor. Uh, a, a pretend or paper money portfolio. You can use everything else in the platform now. Great. Uh, Ken is asking about the uh, access to more Tastyworks trainings. Ken, you can go to Navigation Trading's uh, YouTube channel. We've got uh, you know our previous web class with Tom Sosnoff. This uh, this web class will be recorded and we'll shoot it out to you uh, tomorrow morning. And then other trainings, uh, Ryan, I'll let you direct them to where they can find that. Yeah. If, uh, uh, you know, if you get started and you have a question about anything at all, uh, you can get live in-person support. If you call our trade desk, we have a, a staff of, of 20 people or so that can teach you how to use the platform, show you where to go. That's one way to go about it. We also have a very, very extensive help section here. And so if you click on this, this will open up our help center within the platform. You can see that uh, as we scroll down, you've got a few different sections that you can go into. Um, you know, some of them have a little bit more content than others. The platforms and software section has 54 different articles. Each one of these articles, for the most part, has a video. So if you have a question about doing a specific thing on the trade page, there's a video for that. I've done most of the videos. So if you're sick of my voice by now, um, maybe you just want to read the text. You don't have to watch the videos, but we have very extensive Support help articles, um, very well thought out with a lot of different pictures. And I think for the most part, if um, you know you have something specific you're looking for, just type the search term in here at the top and you will find the relevant article. And if you don't understand what to do or you still have questions after that, you can either reach out to us via phone, chat, or email. And that's just support at tastyworks.com. Cool. And then lastly, John's got one parting question and I'll, I'll give my two cents and then let you touch it, touch on it if you want, Ryan. But he's asking, uh, it's like he currently, he currently uses Toss and wants to know why, you know, what, what your pitch would be on why Tastyworks is better. My personal opinion is Toss is a great platform. I still use it today. I would say once Tastyworks starts offering options on futures, because I trade a lot of options on futures, I will most likely make the switch 100%. Right now I trade on both. So Ryan, I don't, it's kind of like commenting on your ex-girlfriend. I don't know if you want to comment on that or not, but I'll let you decide. Yeah, I, you know, and I can pretty much echo what you just said. Um, Toss is a fantastic platform. It has a lot of features. I still use it, um, and I do trade a lot of options on futures as well. So I have money with Tastyworks. I certainly work for Tastyworks and Tasty Trade. Trade on both platforms each day. Uh, can't wait for us to get options on futures with Tastyworks. That's one of the reasons why I still have some uh, some capital over there. But um, you know, I think, and not not to downplay Tasty Works here, but Ch Toss at the moment does have more robust charts. So if you're a chart trader or you like a lot of different indicators um, that might not be in the Tasty Works platform, you know that might be one area where that Toss is better. And I would say, you know, counter to that, um, Tasty Trade, depending on your style of trading. Excuse me, Tasty Works, depending on your style of trading, has a very nice commission structure, and I'm sure um, you've touched on that. But if you're trading larger size, uh, we cap the commissions to a degree, depending on how many legs make up the trade. Um, it's a dollar to open a trade, and it's a dollar to open a contract. It's free to close, but we cap each leg at ten dollars. So if you did a thousand contracts, you would only pay ten dollars. If you did a thousand uh, vertical spreads, 
you would only pay $20. So the most that you would ever pay on a trade is $40. And um, like I said, we only charge on the opening transaction, whether it's options, it's equities, or it's futures, and ultimately, or it's uh, options on futures. We only charge to open. There's no closing charge. So it makes it a little bit cheaper um, depending on, on what you're doing. So I'd say that's the benefit with Tastyworks. It's also very fast. And what, you know what I like about the Tastyworks platform, some of the things that I've showed you, just how easy it is to click set up the trade. And once you get used to that, I find that many times now that I'm used to that, I'm, I'm used to the way that the information is displayed in Tastyworks. I do struggle a little bit and find that it's a little bit clunkier navigating um, some of the other platforms that are out there. So I think two different platforms, um, two different maybe types of customer. And I know recently it feels like uh, Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade have, have started to go in some different directions than maybe the direction we're going in. But I'll say if you are an options trader, you're looking for a lightweight platform that's very fast, makes it easy to do some of the very basic things that I think a lot of traders are just looking to do, this is a great place uh, to be. Yeah, and I'll say this as a customer, I think you're downplaying the commission thing a little bit, Ryan, because that is so huge. I mean, the amount of commission uh, that you pay at one broker you know, versus, versus Tastywork is such a huge deal. And in fact, for, for anybody who hasn't seen it, even as free members, there's no cost for this or anything. But if you log into your members area at Navigation Trading, we have a sheet that allows you to compare broker commissions. So if you're trading on one broker, you can input any fees or costs or, or commissions associated with that broker. You can put a side by side comparison of Tastyworks or anybody you want and, it'll, and, and give you an idea of how much commission you're going to spend over the course of a year. I did this personally with, you know, Toss versus Tastyworks and other brokers. And it, I mean, it, it literally can reduce your commissions by 70, 80 percent over the course of a year. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I think that obviously has a big impact on your P&L. And you know, maybe Tom touched on this a little bit, but that's our goal here is to you know, make trading accessible, um, give everybody the tools and the technology they need, but also not you know, make it prohibitive in terms of cost. Um, so we're trying to put some pressure on the industry. We're trying to go in different directions and, you know, we can still make money while making it, um, you know, a lot cheaper for everybody else to trade. And I think ultimately over the long run, you're already starting to see it in equities with firms like Robinhood. I think you're just going to see continued pressure on costs. And it wouldn't be it wouldn't be surprising at all to me at some point if we see that, um, you know, it's, it's free to trade um, in terms of commissions. Excellent, Ryan. Well, hey, we really appreciate your time today. It's been awesome hearing your knowledge about the platform. I know you, you probably know it better than anyone else over there. So love it. Loved having you on. Thank you for your time. Thank you. If you have any questions, we'll let you go. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for the opportunity and uh, you guys take care. All right, guys. Everybody have a good one. Talk to you soon.